Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. But Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei's David's brother. And Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He said to him, O son of the king, why are you so depressed morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Then Ammon said, I'm in love with Tamar, the sister of my brother. Jonadab said to her, lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. Hmm? When your father comes to see you, say to him, please let my sister Tama come and give me some food to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight that I may see it and eat from her hand. If this friend had said, you know what guy, that's a wrong thought towards your sister. If you want to get married to your sister, go tell the king. Because then it was allowed. They could marry. The king will give it to you. Give her to you. What would have happened? They have married her properly. You realize what happened? This advice led to rape. I want you to pick something. He did not advise her to rape the sister. He gave her an advice. He became a slave to that advice. That advice now ended up in something. Because every suggestion you get, you will deepen yourself in it. It will result to something. So you see that what made this man to commit this atrocity was his circle of influence. Because at that time, if that circle of influence threw something different, it would have been altered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? So, you see, and sometimes your circle of influence, when you get advice from them, it might not look very serious. Ah, why are you like this? Say, oh, this. I say, no, 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 just do it like that. It will look like casual suggestion. But remember what we read in the book of Romans. As you get that thought into your head, you become subject to that. Let's, let's see something here. Go to 1 Kings 12.10. Wow. 1 Kings 12.10. Are you, are you getting something? Say amen if you are. Alright. 1 Kings 12.10. Remember, um, Rehoboam, they've given him the kingdom. He was the king. And then these people came and said, please lighten the yoke on us. I want you to observe one word. Verse, verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the elders which they had given him and consulted with the young men who grew up with him and served him. Observe that. Who grew up with him. Observe this. Very important. So he said to them, What counsel do you give me that may answer these people who have spoken to me saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us. The young men who grew up with him. You know, these words came so strong in me. People who grew up with you. You need to discern. It's not everybody who grows up with you that has the right to speak into your life for your destiny. Look at what it says. It says, Thou shalt say to these people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now you make it lighter for us, but you shall speak to them. Say, My father's little finger is, my little finger, sorry, is thicker than my father's loins. Can you say, say go and tell them. You are not a small boy. Your, your little finger is thicker than your father's loins. Tell them. People who he grew up with. You know what happened? He gave this advice to the people and the kingdom was divided. Are you following what I'm saying? It's little suggestion. What is there? Ah, we will tax you more. And say, okay, if it's like that, so you attend to Israel. Imagine if the ones he grew up with told him, you know what? Now that these people have come to subject themselves to you, why don't you just tell them it's okay? Let's see what he would have retained the kingdom. I want you to see, what I want you to really pick tonight is to see the bigger aspect of those little advice you are taking, how they play out on your destiny. Those little suggestions, those little, ah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, those things, they are influencing the results of your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do you know that if somebody challenged you to be reading one book a week, do you know what that would do for your life in the next 10 years? Just one book. And if somebody also gives you a 
funny habit of not developing yourself personally, not checking you personally, not caring whether you read or you don't read anything, do you know how that will impact on your capacity in the next couple of years? The road and the pathway to success is tough. Let's get used to it. There are no free lunches in life. Let's, let's, let's stop having this thing at the back of our mind that we can have failure habits and expect to end up successful. It doesn't work. It does not work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It does not work. I, I, I was reading a book, um, Digital Minimalism by Carl Newport, the author of Deep Work. I was talking about how, how social media sees us. You know, social media sees us as products, Right? Yeah, that's how social media sees us. We are product. And the social media is designed with addictive technology. You know something right now? If you're on Facebook right now, you know instead of typing anything, immediately somebody puts a comment. Have you observed on Facebook now? Once you, once you want to type, they have pre-typed a lot of answers for you. It's just to click. They make it easy for you to engage. And then there's a new technology out. Now, I don't know how many of you have observed it. If you are in some groups, immediately you want to comment. They'll just say, oh, this will be good for this group. Share it. Have you seen that pop up on your timeline? As you do one video, one video is coming up. One video is coming up. Those guys didn't design it because they just want you to be connected. Anything that is not free, you are paying for it. So you need to watch how these things influence. I'm going to talk about media. I hope I get there. So watch those you grew up with. What is their dominant conversation? What is their dominant interest? What is their dominant pattern and value system? Let me tell you something. Most people you grew up with, very few will make the decision to break out of that circle. That's why you realize that most of the people you grew up with, if you go back to certain places 10 years down the line, their lives are taking different shape. You have to be deliberate and say, you know what? I grew up in this system. I grew up in this environment, but I want to make something different out of my life. Then you sit back and say, if I want to make something different out of my life, how do I scale? How do I get to that next point? How do I get to that next level of engagement? Next level of capacity building? What books do I read? What things do I watch? What are the disciplines I need to put into my life? And you have to be consistent with this because that's how you get results on the atrium. You don't get results on the atrium by being emotional about your decisions. Whether it's your personal development, whether it's your uh, spiritual life, whether it's your mental life, are you following what I'm saying? Whether it's your Bible study life, whether it's whatever. Whether it's the value you're bringing into career. You can't sit around all the workers who are lazy in your office and, you know, during lunch, you, you put toothpick down, you are changing toothpick and toothpick and toothpick and toothpick. When they are waiting for people to promote, they will not promote you. You have to bring extra value. So you need to ask yourself, the people at work that are bringing extra value to the workspace, what are they doing with their time? And you make that adjustment. You know, my le- one of my teachers told me something many years ago and it helped my life. He says, if you want to be the first in class, look for the first three people in class. Start hanging around them. You, become, you would move up. And I was wondering. You know, I used to, in the, in the village school, when we are in the village, I used to be, well, I'm intelligent. So let me not use the word I used to be intelligent like I'm not now. So I used to take first, second, third in the village school. So my principal, J.D. Oko, I love him. The man, one day I had several A's and B's. So he took me to, to his office. He said, why am I seeing this C in your results? I'm like, ah. But I tried. He said, no, you can be a straight A student. That day he challenged me that you can have 100% in everything. That challenge hasn't left me. I mean, I go into my school. I mean, I remember my Bible school course, and they brought some stuff. I had like 98 or 80 something. I was like, how, how can I? You know, I can And, you know, my Bible school was like, you, you're one of the first students who are seeing that is arguing for 100, like you are fighting for something. You know, my principal just instilled that thing in me. If there's 100, you can get it. That's why it's there, you know, and all of that. So, but then I observed, when we now moved to worry, they now brought me to, I, I, I kind of got a bit of a partial scholarship and came to a, a private school. So, you know, the standards coming from the village to the private school was a bit different, okay? So, I didn't expect to pass very well because when they were teaching, I just understood that, yeah, this is not village. But then, something had happened. That was the little period I had my little teenage rebellion. Just, just little. It was very small. Not so much. But I had this circle of friends. They were twins because I just got into the school, so they, they were around me. Uh, 
they like rap music. So, during break, hmm, they'll bring Mac Morrison, Return of the Mac, hmm, B.I.G., Tupac, Snoop Doggy Dog. All right? Voice to men. So that's what they'll be singing during break. Pastor's child. There was no way I could listen to rap. All I was listening to in the house is Panapasi Paul. Bring down the glory. <laughs> Early in the morning, in the morning, we will rise and praise the Lord. The family that prays together stays together. I mean, this new sound was good. So before I knew, they would say, oh, during break, let's go to their house. We'll go to their house. We'll listen to rap music. Before I knew, I was copying rap. To rap, yeah. Return of the mark. California City. We'll type California City. Write this one, write this one, write this one, write this one. So my whole break time was taken over but that. So when my result came out. Because you see, life will give you exactly what you put in it. You know, there's no deception in this thing. Whatsoever a man sow, that has shall he reap, whether you're a pastor's child or not. So I've used my break time to sow rap. And you know, rap doesn't come out in the exam. So I didn't do well. So my, my, my dad thought, ah, it's because he's just coming, first term. Second term. I've become a slave to that thing. Now, I'm not only waiting for them. I'm not the one generating lyrics. So, your work is to go and bring this one. My work is to bring this one. See deception here. They now even said, but do you even know that Tony Braxton was a pastor's child? I say, wow. And she asked, ah. So, they loaded me with Tony Braxton. At least, he's a pastor's child. So, both of you are the same. So, if you have a pastor's child who is mad, you can also become mad. You understand? Now, see the subtle thing, right? They didn't show me a pastor's child who was doing well. They didn't show me a pastor's child who was writing books. Because the devil will use his wisdom to show you people who are not as bad. You know, that's how they, they, they have the, yeah, you are smoking now. He's one stick. See that guy? See, go, he's smoking. Your own is, he said, Maurice. You know, I mean, people are smoking. Do you know, so you just look at it. My evil is not as much as that evil. You see, every time you tell yourself that, you are going down. Because you're not comparing yourself with somebody else. You're comparing yourself with who God has designed you to be. Your measurement is against your potential. So imagine today that God didn't have mercy on me and I didn't turn. Right? I won't be here holding this thing. You'll just be on Facebook. You say, you know that guy who is that rabbi? I used to be in church. Nine books that are blessing people all over the world. There'll be no books. Messages all over the world. Do you understand this? So, the issue is, is not God measuring with whether somebody else was rapping us. No, God is measuring with the kappa. You, you must always have that thought that inside of you is a gold mine of exceptional possibility. Saints, I'll tell you, you can't tell in this life if you will put yourself to work where you will end up. I can tell you this. I mean, literally sometimes I've walked into hotels. When they open the door, I start crying. I remember I preached in the U.S. one time. It took me there to preach. And then they opened this. I mean, I went into this hotel. They locked the door. I, I, I felt that I said, God, how did I get here? It was a retired U.S. Marine officer that came to pick me for the, from the airport. I said, how did I get this level of honor? Even if I was confessing God's word, I couldn't have confessed this. It beats my imagination. But you know what? That's what seed time and harvest does. You can determine the seed. You can't tell how much is in the harvest. So back to my story. Second term, I failed again. So the third term, my father called me. You know, my parents are both educationists, so I grew up in school. So my, my father obviously knew, said, no, this is not issue of village and uh, township. Something is wrong. At least you are intelligent. You should have picked up. What's the problem? So, I mean, of course, I, I wouldn't say, well, praise the Lord. I was typing rap during break. You know? So my, my dad came to the school, talked to my teachers. My teachers told them about my circle of friends. So my, my dad banned me from, from talking with them and all of that. And in the house I was raised, my father does not repeat things. Do you understand? The, my father does not tell you, stop following this person, then he will tell you again. If he tells you, stop following this person, and then he tells you again, what will probably happen is that the capacity to follow that person will be taken off from you. So, so when my father says stop, it's not, it, it, it's stop, because only you can't, that's the seed, is stop. You can't tell the harvest 
if you want to reap it. So when he said, don't follow the way, I just said, no, 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 no way. <laughs> Are you following this? And then, so I went to my teacher. I said, what can I do? I need to improve my grades. And my teacher said, you know what? There was one girl. I can't forget the girl. Onajite. The girl beat everybody in that class. Yes. Everybody. Maths. Somebody will be having A1 in for that maths. What is wrong with you? I hear what I'm saying. And what I realized is out of all of the girls that people were, they will crush, they will crash, they will crush, they will crash. Nobody crushed on her. Because there's a level of intelligence that separates you from some foolishness. Uh -huh. You know, for there, any, anybody going to meet that girl is somebody who is serious for marriage. It's not that I want to, uh, I just like, you can't just like now. A1 hey, for that mass. <laughs> I would like, what are you liking there? Uh, you, you, so, the first thing is, if you come to that level, you have to make sure that your brain is, is sane first. So, it's not like you are, well, nowadays, I, I think things have changed because sometimes you see some union and you are wondering, how did these two people get to like themselves? So, this is what I observed. When I started working with her, working with a couple of people, funny enough, the girls in our school were really doing well, so most of them were girls. What happened, I discovered that their habits during break was different. Why during break we we'll buy Limka and, and Bones and be writing rap during break? They are doing classwork and homework and classwork and homework. And immediately I stayed with them for like three months. That was one semester. Something happened. I went up a few steps. That was SS1. So by the time I got to SS3, I had reason to what happened. It wasn't that my brain was dull. I need this guy. That's why I have to use my story. It wasn't that my brain was dull. It wasn't that I did not want to be successful. It wasn't that I didn't want to make something out of my life. What happened was I became slave to my closest circle of influence. And that part would have taken me somewhere else. So when I, when I, when I went to the university, I picked that up. So when I got called into full-time ministry, I did something very drastic. I caught up a lot of my friends, caught up a lot of my friends, and made friends with people whose passion 100% was ministry. You know what that helped me to do? It helped me to be able to focus on my call and get to where I'm getting today. Because that's what principle I have learned in life. That anywhere you are going to, if you find the people with the right values, and you find the people with the right system, and you put them around you as your closest circle of influence, you will alternatively end up there. Because what's going to happen, they're going to affect your character, your development, and then what? Your behavior. This one decision led to his loss of the kingdom he got on a platter of gold. A circle of influence would either make us lose or gain. Every decision, write this down, every decision takes you away from destiny or takes you to destiny. No decision leaves you the same. Every decision takes you away from destiny or takes you to what? To destiny. Influence is subtle. Sometimes it is not easily noticed as it comes in form of suggestions or opinions. Let me tell you something. If you want to excel in this life, be hard on yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be tough on yourself. Don't allow people to be tough on you. Be tough on yourself. That book, get up and read it when you don't feel like reading. That money, save it when you feel like buying something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That decision, that relationship you know is not taking you anywhere, cut off from it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know this thing, it won't... Shut it down. Just shut it down. Shut it down. Your emotions will cry. Your, you, shut it down. This, no. It's not going to This, no, I'm not doing it. This, I'm not doing it. Be tough on yourself. Life is not fair. Get used to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because before you know, we can't even be talking of the younger generation. Now, our children are already taller than us. You know, I sat down with my wife yesterday. I was thinking about my son. He's going to just three next, next, uh, next, next September. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? We have three more years with this boy in the house. After that, he's gone forever. And that's the truth. Because he goes to university, he only comes for break, right? He goes from there, NYC from there. He goes, so we've got only three years. And I just said, you know what? We have the next three years. Whatever we want to teach him. Whatever. We have three years to put it. Because you also, all those things you will be sending him on WhatsApp when he's in school. He has made up his mind what he wants. You just delete. 
voice note. My son, as you go, don't mess up with bag. I say, Mama, Amen, Amen. You know what you do to your parents' message. I just leave that old man. So, do you understand? You see, in life, you have to tell yourself the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, maybe it's me. That's how I think, futuristic. And we just, I mean, that we just said. So, she just said, it's three years. You know you are the one that is going to be seeing him in school. So, he said, okay, no problem. You have to make that adjustment. That, okay, fine. In three years, this boy is going to be out. I will be the one to go and be visiting him in school. So, if I'm going to be the one to visit him in school, I need to intentionally now, intentionally now, begin to cultivate and deepen that relationship. It's not the one I now get to the gate. They now say he's not around. They can tell you he's not around. See, whatever message you brought, you can drop it. Because the boy doesn't want to see you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> see, you have to be, every area of your life, you have to be intentional about it. And then you know that if you want this harvest in the next three years, I need to start putting some seed on the ground. Are you following what I'm saying? You want to, in the next three years, be able to hit a peak in your career. You start your certification today. It's not the day when they now determine your certification. You now say, oh, you see, a man said, if you are preparing in the day of battle, you are already late. You have to prepare for battle. That means you have to intelligently choose your friends. And don't be emotional about it. Don't be emotional about it. Because your friends will influence you. And what I found that is this. There are friends that are at the level you also want to get to. There are friends with the same level of desire. You know, sometimes when you are, when you are on fire and you are disciplining yourself, you think that, wow, you are the only person. Until you now meet some people and you tell, yeah, you just say, no, 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 no. I'm learning. There are many people who should write books. They never sit down to write. No discipline. Look at this. Proverbs 22.5. I'll finish this. Proverbs 22.5. Tons and snares are in the way of the perverse. There are tons there. There are snares. One who guides himself will be far from them. Proverbs 22.5. Tons and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guides himself will be far from them. That means on that pathway of perverse people, there is guarantee for tons and, and snares. What you do, the word snare is a trap. What you do is that you will guide yourself. He who guides himself will be far from them. So you need to put that in on yourself. That part, are there tones on that part? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are there tissues? And you've got to be honest. You've got to have that honest conversation with yourself. This route that my friends are in, is that where I want to go to? Is that the route I want to take? Some of us need to get up at night and read. We are already late. We need to catch up. This is six months into the year. Some of us have not, have not done proper study. We've not done proper prayer. We've not done proper, you know, I mean, you know, stuff that we know can take us further, further and forward. You have to just be, and, and, and this thing has to come from the inside of you. Because most times what keeps us down is that we are working with people who don't want to change. And if people's desire to change is not at the same level with you, they will drag you down to their level of mediocrity. Because anything you do will look very serious. You hold a book. Is he a book? You just be holding book, 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 book. Did that go to go to school? No, you are, you are not. That's not your goal. Do you understand that? That's not your goal. You have a different goal. You are not Dangote. For your purpose to be actualized, you need to put this level of reading. For your purpose to be actualized, you need to put this level of discipline. For your purpose to be actualized, you need to put this level of uh, work into your life. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. The Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.